All right, as we move on uh, with our second part of Tuesday's Science Notes, we continue on with uh, weather instruments. Just did the thermometer and the barometer. Some of you guys have made those. And we move on to an anemometer. Animate is always movement. So an animated movie um, means movement. So an anemometer, how fast are things moving? And you can see that cup could catch the wind. This is also one too, pretty ingenious. The kid's blowing on it and a piece of paper starts going up and the harder they blow, the more that paper goes up these little um, cross sections here, those little tick marks. Invented about 500 years ago by Da Vinci. Uh, he used cups to catch the wind. Then you have the barometer without um, mercury or some sort of liquid. It's called an aneroid barometer, used pretty extensively today, and that just deals with just a little bit of air pressure can push down on that metal, and it can cause the dial to go uh, further one way or the other, okay? It's a non-liquid, it measures air pressure, it gives a mercury-type reading without the use of mercury. Uh, one of those was used in the weather balloon, also an instrument, that I think I showed one class, but maybe not the other. This is a weather balloon that had exploded, and then it came down from the sky with this big parachute, and it had a bunch of stuff in it. Um, these things here gave all sorts of readings and so on, and there's an aneroid barometer right here that would have given the air pressure reading. A uh, little battery that goes with it, which I should probably dump. Um, but yeah, that worked out pretty cool. A uh, student's grandfather had found that as it came down years ago. A psychrometer, some of you were working on that one where you have a wet and dry bulb. And that's where I talk about if you walk out of a shower that was just 100 degree water on you, you step out right away, you feel cold. Why? Well, that water is evaporating off of you and taking heat with it. Now, if that bathroom was all, um, all the windows were closed up and you got it good and uh, foggy from the water that you had had on you when you were showering, then when you step out, you don't get as cold real quick because that air is so thick with water vapor that it's not going to evaporate off of you very quickly because the, the air is already drenched with water. Now, if that air is really dry and you step out, you'll feel chillier quickly because that water will evaporate more quickly and bring the heat off of you more quickly. So we use that principle here with the two thermometers. If one's dry and one is wet, and in this case they have kind of like a little uh, sock type material, you got a little bit of water here that it's stuck into, and water always travels up cloth material and, and sort of keeps that wet. And so now if the temperatures are quite a bit different, we would say it's dry outside because the evaporating is happening faster, which is cooling down this one because it's evaporating off of here. If the air was quite filled with water, it wouldn't evaporate as quickly. So then the temperatures would be a lot closer to each other. So in that way, we can tell how dry it is outside if there's a bigger gap. And if it's quite wet outside, the gap will be, you know, not as big. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so thermometer, two thermometers, a wet bulb, dry bulb. The wet evaporating water draws heat out, making it cooler. Relative humidity is based on the comparison of temperature between the both, between both of them. So the relative humidity is based on uh, the difference. Bigger difference, drier. Less difference, wetter. I just showed you a weather balloon. Um, it's much cheaper to use the weather balloon. We used to send pilots way, way up in the sky with stuff, and that was expensive. Fuel, airplanes, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's not very safe for 
pilots to go way up there uh, years ago. Uh, now we just send it up a cheap weather balloon and we get everything we need. Of course, everybody thinks we're seeing UFOs though. Um, this is actually a Hurricane Hunter, uh, one of those planes that fly right through one. Looks like they're setting up a weather balloon down in the Antarctic. Uh, pretty useful, pretty cheap. And we'll stop on this one today. Radar is used quite often when we're talking about forecasting and seeing stuff happening uh, in the Midwest where you're gonna have a lot more uh, tornadoes and southeast where you have the hurricanes. You're gonna see uh, the use of this Doppler radar is more important. Uh, you had the regular radar which bounces off Doppler which is advanced and what that means is um, it's kind of like how we use echo lo echolocation. If you send radar out and it hits off something and bounces back to whatever's receiving it, you're gonna know where something is in the sky. So that's what this is doing. But Doppler radar is so sensitive that it can tell not just when it bounces off and comes back and where this object is, but it can tell you what direction it's going. So it's much more sensitive. So I'm sure they're gonna come up with something else. I think there's something called double Doppler now. Sure, they're probably super Doppler or super awesome Doppler or whatever it is. Uh, radar keeps on getting better, but it's very important to see what's in the air. So it's bouncing off uh, raindrops and hailstones and things like that. All right, we'll stop with that for the science weather notes for today.